Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to help a viewer to create an accounts payable summary report. The viewer wanted me to show him how to create a formula in Excel to return the status of an invoice. He wants to be able to know using a formula whether the invoice has been paid whether the status is pay it now or whether the status is to delay payment. And later on in the lesson he wants to be able to have a status summary. We'll use the sum if function to sum up the values of the invoice amount where the status is paid or where the status is pay now or where the status is delay. All right, let's begin. The first cell to examine up here is cell E1. In E1, I use the today function. Now, the today function is what's called a volatile function. It's not going to shout at you, but the results are going to be volatile. They will depend upon the date that is in your computer system clock. So the result of the today function today gives me April 23rd, 2011. When I open up this workbook tomorrow, the result of the today function will be April 24th, 2011. So the today function is going to be a key element when you're doing accounts receivable, accounts payable uh, status reports. All right, now the next one is we want to use a function called is blank. The is blank is a terrific function because it will return true or false. So we want to see over here in uh, in column C when we point to a cell is blank true or false. So in this case it's going to return true as you'll see over here if I write equals is blank and point to the cell over here the result is going to be true. Whereas when I copy this down, the value is going to be false because it's not indeed blank. Now, what we'll do over here is that when we get the answer to the logical test, true, that it is blank, this is what we're going to do. We're going to nest a second if function inside our first if function. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look over here to the due date, the date that this invoice is due to be paid, and say, is it less than? In other words, is it earlier than today? Now again, we have another value if true. In this case, we're going to use text. So if indeed the due date is earlier than today, I've chosen to put this text, pay now. It really doesn't matter what text to use as long as you enclose it inside double quotation marks. The value if false, meaning that the due date is not earlier than today, then I'll put in there delay. Now remember when we're nesting one function inside the other, remember where your parentheses are. So remember we said for our first is blank, value of true, use the second if function, value of false. In this case, I'm going to use the text paid. So I strongly recommend that you create the if functions separately so that you can test out the results. So the value of true if it's blank will be equals if and what we want to do is we want to point over here to the cell that is the due date, use the less than operator, and then point up here to the cell that contains the result of the today function. Now remember that as we copy this down, we want B7 to become B8, B9, B10, etc. But we want the reference to cell E1 to remain in place. We want to make it an absolute reference. So the easiest way to do that is to use the F4, the function for keyboard shortcut, to place a dollar sign in front of the column E to freeze that in place, dollar sign in front of the 1 to freeze row 1 in place. So if it is earlier than today, the value if true will be, and I'll put in the text, pay now. And again, remember, include it inside double quotation marks. The value, if false, I'll put in there delay. Again, double quotation marks, and then type in your text, double quotation marks, and then we'll close this off with the right parentheses. So now that you've learned how to put the is blank to be your first um, uh, if function, your logical test, and the result, if it's true, the second one, now what we can do is we can combine these. So an easy way to do that is just double click over here and put equals if, no, I'm sorry, equals if, and I want to use the is blank, point over here to this cell, 
and then the value of true after the comma will be that nested if function and then remember the value of false for is blank what I want to do is I want to come over here and I'll put in a comma and I'll put in text as paid and remember to put in the closing right parentheses so there you go pay now because it's not blank it's going to return paid and if this date is not less than then we have the delay in there all right so now that we've learned that let's see how the sum if function will work first off I like to use name ranges for the sum if function so I have two name ranges over here the range of cells over here in column a called invoice amount and I have named this range over here status so over here let's take a look with the sum if function so I want to look in the range called status the criteria that I'm looking for is this label up here now I like to write a function once so I can copy it over copy it across so in this case notice that I've frozen the row so I want F to change the G to change to H but I always want it to be in row 4 and then when it matches that criteria then what do I want to actually sum I want to get a sum of the invoices that match this status so let's create this over here for pay now equals sum if and I will use control a to bring up the function arguments dialog box the range and in this case I'm going to come over here on the formulas tab of the ribbon is to use this in the formula so I want to look inside the status the criteria that I want to match is up here but remember I want to freeze this row by putting a dollar sign in front of row 4 and then when I find it what range do I want to sum well instead of coming up here to the formulas tab and the using formulas the great keyboard shortcut called F3 so the function 3 keyboard shortcut brings me up a list of the names uh, in this workbook so I want to sum the invoice for the status that matches in this case pay now so there you go and now I can copy this over and there you go now finally my viewer wanted to know well how many days in the future will be uh, when I'm gonna have to pay this in other words how many days later than today is this cell so again we want to think of a starting cell and we want to think of an end date so in this case a simple way to do that would be to come over here and say equals and in this case our first date minus our second date and again remember to make this part of the formula absolute so use F4 and then click control enter so it's going to be payable in two days this is going to be payable in eight days so there you've learned how you can approach creating an accounts payable status report in Excel nest one if function inside of another and then summarize it up with the sum if function and I'll look for you in the next lesson.